Good evening, sir. One. Cocktail before dinner? Yes, please. The Gibson. Right away. Again. Yes. Do you recommend anything? The Brook Trout. A little trouty, but quite good. So. Brook Trout. Hey, well, I think. Yes, sir. Vaguely familiar. Yes. You feel you've seen me somewhere before. Mm-hmm. Funny how I have that effect on people. It's something about my face. It's a nice face. You think so? I wouldn't say it if I didn't. Oh, you're that type. What type? Honest. Not really. Good, because honest women frighten me. Why? I don't know. Somehow they seem to put me at a disadvantage. Because you're not honest with them? Exactly. Like that business about the seven parking tickets? So what I mean is, the moment I meet an attractive woman, I have to start pretending I've no desire to make love to her. What makes you think you have to conceal it? She might find the idea objectionable. Then again, she might not. Think how lucky I am to have been seated here. Well, luck had nothing to do with it. Fate? I tipped the steward five dollars to seat you here if you should come in. Is that a proposition? I never discuss love on an empty stomach. You've already eaten. But you haven't. Don't you think it's time we were introduced? I'm Eve Kendall. I'm 26 and unmarried. Now you know everything. Tell me, what do you do besides lure men to their doom on the 20th Century Limited? I'm an industrial designer. Jack Phillips, Western sales manager for Kingley Electronics. No, you're not. You're Roger Thornhill of Madison Avenue, and you're wanted for murder on every front page in America. And don't be so modest. Whoops. Well, don't worry. I won't say a word. How come? I told you. It's a nice face. Is that the only reason? It's going to be a long night. True. And I don't particularly like the book I've started. I'd invite you to my bedroom if I had a bedroom. I have a large drawing room all to myself. It doesn't seem quite fair, does it? Drawing room E, car 3901. Such a nice number. It's easy to remember. 3901. See? No luggage. So? Well, you wouldn't happen to have an extra pair of pajamas, would you? Wouldn't I? Incidentally, I wouldn't order any dessert if I were you. I get the message. That isn't exactly what I meant. This train seems to be making an unscheduled stop, and I just saw two men get out of a police car as we pulled into the station. They weren't smiling. is a virtue. So is breathing. Just lie still. Have you got the olive oil? Olive oil? I want to be packed in olive oil if I'm going to be a sardine. Come in. 
Who are you? State police. Your name, please? Eve Candle. Is anything wrong? There was a man at your table tonight in the dining car. Yes. Friend of yours? I never saw him before. Is this the man? Yes, I think so. It's not a very clear picture. The wire photo, we just got it from the New York police. Police? He's wanted for murder. Good heavens, no. Stewart said you left the dining car together. We might have happened to leave at the same time, but not together. What did you two talk about? Talk about? Ah, your waiter said that you were getting along pretty good with this Thornhill fellow. Oh, is that his name, Thornhill? You mean he didn't tell you? He didn't tell me anything. All we did was chat about different kinds of food, train travel versus plane travel, that sort of thing. Rather innocuous, I must say, considering he was a fugitive from justice. Who did he kill? He didn't say where he was going, did he? No. I assume Chicago. You think perhaps he got off when you got on? Look, if you happen to catch sight of him again, Miss... Uh... Kendall. Will you let us know? I'm going to bed soon, and I intend to lock my door, so I doubt if I'll be seeing him or anybody else tonight. Well, just in case you do, we'll be in the observation car at the rear of the train. It's comforting to know that. Good night. Still breathing? I gotta hurry up and get me a snorkel. I'm looking for the can opener I stole from the porter. 